So you guys wondering what we're doing with this thing yet? This is an eight pound sledgehammer head. This is a cheap hardware store sledgehammer I picked up a long time ago. The handle broke off of it and uh, you know I've been as I'm learning the blacksmithing I'm finding that it's a real good time moving metal especially the 5 8 inch thick the 1080 steel we're using it takes a lot of heat and it takes a lot of pounding to get that stretched out drawn out things like that so I need something to make that a little bit easier now when I say easier I guess I'm saying a heavier hammer. Now, I, I'm usually swinging a two and a half pound cross peen hammer when I'm drying stuff out, but on that thicker stuff, it just doesn't move very fast, and you end up expending a lot more energy, I've noticed, trying to move that kind of metal rather than just uh, maybe something a little bit heavier that you can move the metal faster and don't have to swing as much. So, it is not uncommon for me here in the farm to swing a 12 pound fence maul by hand for half the day one hand at a time holding posts and pounding them with the other hand. So I'm not too worried about swinging this eight pound sledge too much. Now granted, once we get things shaped out the way we want them, that's going to weigh a little bit less than the eight pounds. I'm still thinking it's going to end up probably, well, probably around six pounds, I would, if I had to guess, maybe even a little more than that. But that's okay. I can deal with that. I mean, heck, you got to get our exercise somehow, right? So. What we're doing here, you know, I'll just explain it a little bit. So the handle's going to come up through the bottom here. Now if you could see, I have two lines scored in right there with the, the band saw. So I'm making that peen, I'm making a peen hammer kind of diagonal. Now the reason I'm doing that, I'm finding with a cross peen hammer, it's very awkward to hold that hammer to hold your material straight on the anvil and hold your hammer straight so you're doing this, it's not a very natural movement. So I want something, because it's normal for me, to hold the material out a little bit with one hand and kind of come at it like that. So I'm figuring something with a diagonal peen on it will work a lot nicer. And I swing the hammer with both hands, so I'm probably going to put the opposite diagonal peen on each end. So no matter what hand I'm swinging the hammer with at the time, I'll be able to do whatever I want. So anyway, stay tuned. I hope you enjoy it. We've got a fun evening of grinding ahead of us. We're going to see how far we get. And uh, yeah, so that's where we're at. So I'll see you on the other side of it. Alright, so here's what we're going for. You can see I have one quarter of this thing shaped out. So we kind of cut this kind of nice and sloping. And the whole idea here is I want to maintain as much weight as I can, but I still need to be able to swing it one-handed, which like I said, I swing a lot of 12-pound post mahals days on end it seems in the spring. So I'm not too worried about it, but uh, we'll see what happens. So we want to hit this side next. We want to try to get this side to match as best I can. And then when we get this sliced off of here, we're going to sit and we're going to round all this over so we get a nice radius on there. I've noticed, um, now I don't have any proper blacksmithing hammers yet. I'll have to make some, but, um, so you see this ball peen hammer right here. Now this is just a cheap four or five dollar hammer from Hazard Fraught, but it gets through. But when you get these, they have a really sharp edge on them. So you take them to your grinder, your sander, whatever it is you're using, and you clean that edge up, polish it up a little bit, and then you don't get all the sharp hammer marks in the piece you're working on quite so badly. Same thing goes with the cross peens or any of that. So that's the same thing we kind of want to go with here. We don't want any sharp lines on this, any sharp corners, so that we get a well-defined line indented into whatever we're forging then we have to deal with it on the grinder and I can tell you the grinding takes longer than anything with the equipment that I have so we're going to keep going.
everybody. So that took about uh, now that probably took about an hour hour of grinding to get to that point right there. So we actually have it. I don't know how I did it, but I actually have it fairly symmetrical. We have quite a bit of shaping and grinding left to do on this thing. Obviously, we have to do the other side. So when you hold the hammer, I don't know. Can you guys see it? So when you hold the hammer. That's looking at it straight on if you're holding the, holding the hammer like this. So when it comes down, it's going to come down. If you're standing to the side of the anvil, it doesn't matter what side you're standing on, but that pin hopefully will straighten out. Now, actually, if I'm holding this with my left hand at the anvil, this pin right here will come down on the metal that way. So I can stand parallel with my anvil and not have to contort my body at an odd angle to get that cross peen on there. So we're going to round this off. We've got to polish it up and then we have to do quite a bit of cutting on the other side. Now on the other side, like I said, it's going to go the opposite way. So this will go across here like so. So hopefully we will see what happens. But I'm just finding that <clears throat> I want to be able to move the metal a little bit quicker and get a little more out of my heats because um, I think if you heat the metal too many times you're going to end up burning it out and then that high carbon steel that you're using you're going to get it ruined over time trying to work it with too much heat. So if any of you are curious this is where we are at with the draw knife. We're uh, getting our rough grinding done on it. I'm not running the camera for the rough grinding because that's just boring to watch. This is something different. I mean, how many times do you see somebody uh, cutting a sledgehammer apart to use it for something other than as a sledgehammer? So that's a little more interesting to watch. But grinding something like this for hours and hours, well, probably not quite so interesting. And as promised, pretty soon I will be taking the camera in the house to show you guys the remodeling that's going on in there. We're actually going to try our hand at some stone work because we're going to do, uh, going to do some work around the coal stove and house, things like that. So that should be interesting. I'm actually going to use, I have field stones everywhere. This being an old farm, there are stone piles all over the place and there's some perfect stones for that kind of thing. We have some nice flat limestone. We have a lot of different granites, things like that. So we're going to actually pull the stone out of the fields and see what happens. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Next video we will continue to work on this one. I don't know when the next video is going to be because I'm currently wrapped up with the honey-do list pretty well and that stuff really needs to get done. So she has been patient for a long time. Time to get some things done for the boss lady. And if any of you are tired of the everybody gets a trophy culture, I'm going to put a uh, link to one of Mary's videos that she just put out today in the description below. It's actually really funny. She's talking about uh, an event she just participated in and everybody got a medal. And she, uh, she goes, Jesus, this is, this is kind of BS. I didn't win any. I didn't win. Why, why am I getting a medal? So she did a pretty entertaining video on that one. Uh, She's got a good sense of humor, you know, it's, it's a different style than what you guys see on this channel, but she's putting out some pretty good stuff, not getting much traction, you know. I know some of you have gone over and watched what's going on, but most of you who tune in here, you guys come along to see what we're doing in the shop and what we're building. You're not really tuning in for stuff like that, but some of you really might get a kick out of that one because it's actually quite funny. So, anyway, have a good night, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will catch you on the next one.